I want you to hear that again, and I don't mean to be just coy about it. Um, they're finding a good way to make lemonade out of lemons here. You, you're, yeah, a lot of people are going to lose their job, but it's it's the freedom not to. It's transitioning to something better. I, I don't know. I don't know. But Steve Leiser, maybe he knows. Democratic strategist extraordinaire. Steve, it sounds like a very half-assed argument to me, but disavow me of that cynical notion. No, because these people aren't actually going to lose their jobs. There's going to be what, at least what the CBO is saying, is that two million people may decide not to work as many hours, or they may decide not to work at all, stay home with their kids, do whatever else is, you know, they, they decide to do. I actually disagree with Mr. Elmendorf here, even though I typically agree with him. I think he's usually right on. I don't think you're going to see two million people decide not to work as much. Right now, we have a very tight labor market. And basically, everybody who has a job now is holding on to it with both hands. And, uh, you know, there's tons of people out there waiting yeah, for Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, Steve, on the math level. If for $1,000 a year, you stop working at a job that pays fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year that's not a shrewd decision and it more or less says that those people who do so are idiots i don't think they're idiots i do think that this is an idiotic argument that's what i'm saying well i mean i you know i don't want to criticize elmendorf any more than i have necessarily but i think his analysis is idiotic you know he keeps saying that there's going to be a disincentive oh, you yeah, know steve i love you dearly but you love it when his analysis is your way goes your way and you don't when it doesn't and by the way republicans He's do the same in, thing but that yeah, is what but, the argument is the argument here is you will be be uh, incentivized not to continue working because the law provides the benefits so that you don't have to. Yeah, and you know, you you even said as much earlier. Uh, who would do that? Basically, for every eight hundred dollars a month that your income goes down, you would get a hundred dollars more in uh, in um, incentives to, that would help pay your premium. To me, that sounds absolutely crazy. No, I, I know what they're doing, Steve. They're preparing for the worst and trying to spin it positively. Yes, many people lose their job, but this is a relief. This isn't a burden. This is a relief. No, no, no. You that's... know that, well, I'm, no. I'm saying the way Nancy Pelosi presented, the way some of these other prominent Democrats have presented, that they're, they're, they're putting a positive spin to something that's, that's awful. No, no, no. I mean, even, even Elmendorf, and I disagree with him, even he says it's not people losing their jobs, it's people who will decide not to work. And we can spin that a couple of ways. Let's assume that he's right. I don't think he is. Let's right. assume that he's right. If those people actually decide not to work, my my prediction is they would be either trying to start a new business, which they'd right. be afraid to do because they would be afraid otherwise before Affordable Care Act they'd, that they'd lose their health insurance. They may decide to go back to school, get some training and things like that. There may be some people doing that. Two million? I don't see it. Neil. All I don't right. Think so that's happen. we could quibble over Elmendorf and what he said, because I agree with you. you can, it's always in the eye of the political beholder. But then you seem to be part in company with the Nancy Pelosi's and, and the, uh, the Congressman Van Hollands and others who are saying that this is a good thing. You do not see something good job-wise in this, that this is not a boom here, right? It, it actually could be a good thing. I mean, if these two million people are of their own accord leaving the workforce, which is what Elmendorf is saying, there are two million people out there that would gladly take their jobs or their hours. If these people don't need to work, if they have a spouse that's supporting them or, or whatever, they're starting a new business, as a matter You're of fact, no that's better great. than Nancy Pelosi. You're trying to say, oh, no, no, those two million drop out, two million more come in. The fact of the matter is they're dropping out for a variety of reasons not the least of which is, I've got Uncle Sam, uh, he's got my back. Uh -huh. In other words, it's sort of like extending unemployment benefits. It's sort of like providing food stamps ad nauseum. You know, to, to those who genuinely need it, it's one thing. To those who take advantage of it and use it as a buttress or support not to do something of their own volition, it's quite another thing. Oh, I don't see anybody doing that. Nobody is going to take that big of a hit on their income just to get a, a 50 or or $100 more a month to help them pay with their health insurance. To me, that just, again, I don't agree with Elmendorf. I don't think his analysis makes sense here at all from that perspective. All right, Steve, always a pleasure. Thank Good you. Good to see you, Neil. In the meantime,